good day, students. Um, today, we're going to talk about circles. So we have gone over how to find the perimeter and area of what are called polygons, shapes that have straight edges. But we are also going to talk about circles in this unit as well. So you'll notice I have drawn a circle, and then I have started to label a couple of parts of a circle because it's really understand. Uh, it's really important that we understand the different parts of a circle, just like it's important we can we understand with polygons, like what is the length of something? What is the width? What is the base of a shape mean? What is the height of a shape mean? All of those parts are really important. And these parts that we're going to talk about today of a circle are also really important because they come into play when we find the perimeter and the area of a circle. So um, you'll notice I have drawn a circle. Um, I have drawn a line across from end to end of the circle. And then I've kind of drawn a line like halfway um, from like that center line to the edge of the circle. And then I've drawn an arrow kind of talking about the distance around a circle. Um, and I've labeled them with different letters, R, D, and C. So let's talk about what all of these uh, particular letters stand for. So um, the length of R in a circle, which is from the center of a circle, I'll draw kind of a dot to denote like this is like the center of the circle, from the center of the circle to any edge, this is called the radius of a circle. So R stands for the radius, um, which is half the distance from, it is half the distance from the center of the circle to the edge, or it's like half the distance across a circle. Um, D, the full distance across from edge to edge through the center. It's important to note that this line goes through the center of a circle versus if I drew a line like down here from like this edge to this edge, that is not the same measurement as this measurement of D, which stands for diameter. This is the diameter of the circle, and this is the distance across a circle, particularly through the center. I'm not going to put that as part of our definition, but the diameter is the distance across a circle through the center. Um, and if we look at the relationship between radius and diameter, um, one diameter is equivalent to two radius or radii. Um, I'm just going to put two radius. So the diameter is equivalent to two radius. Like from this edge to the center is one radius. From the center to the other edge is another radius. So the radius is half of a diameter. So the radius is half the distance. The diameter is the full distance. And now you can kind of see the relationship between radius and diameter. When we measure the distance around a circle, that is called the circumference. And that's how it's spelled right here. That This is called the circumference. And circumference is a very large word. So a lot of times when we're talking about the circumference of a circle, we use the variable C to represent circumference. And this is, a, a, again, essentially the perimeter of a circle. Um, and it has a specific formula that's attached to it. Um, circles are very unique because there is a relationship between the circumference and the diameter. So if we were to look at any size circle, if we were to look at like the size of an Oreo or something much larger, like the table I'm doing this um, lesson on is a circular dining room table. If I was to measure the circumference or the perimeter of either of those circles of the Oreo or this dining room table, and then if I divided it by its diameter, so if I took the Oreo and measured the distance around that circle and divided it by its diameter, the distance across, I would get a particular number. And if I did the same thing with my dining room table, which is a much bigger circle, if I took the circumference and divided it by the distance across the table, its diameter, I'm going to get the same number or the same answer that I got with the Oreo. When we take the circumference divided by the diameter of any two-dimensional, of any flat circle, we get this number. It's a repeating decimal. And it's 3.14159, and it goes on and on and on. The decimals go, goes on and on and on forever. It has no pattern. It's classified as a, uh, an irrational number, okay? And this particular number has a name in math, and it is called, I'm sure as many of you are screaming at your computer right now, it is called pi or pi. Or we use this symbol, the Greek symbol for pi, which kind of looks like I don't really know what it looks like, to be honest. It kind of looks like two vertical lines and then a little squiggle on top. 
Um, so it is called pi. And we use pi when we have to find the um, the circumference and the area of a circle because there is a relationship between the circumference and the diameter. And so when we look to find the area and the circumference, this ratio of circumference to diameter can really help us figure out those things. Um, now, for the sake of our math, if I am asking you to use pi as a number, you can always round it to 3.14. Most of the time, that is what mathematicians do. We round pi to 3.14, and that is the value we use. Um, when you get the chance to use graphing calculators, there's actually a symbol for pi, and it'll take like pi as the full digit. Um, but for now, as we do our math, when we find the area, you know, whatever we're doing with circles, if it involves pi, um, we can just use 3.14. There's also going to be times where I let you do something where I let you leave it in terms of pi, and I'll explain what that means as we do some examples. So let's talk about how we find the circumference and the area of a circle. So you'll notice I'm going to kind of set up two columns where we do an example of circumference and an example of area. Um, these are the two formulas that we're going to need. So we're going to look at circumference first. So to find circumference or the perimeter of a circle, there's a couple of different formulas that we can use. So if we are given the diameter of a circle, we can take the diameter times pi, and that is the circumference, okay? Um, because the circumference divided by, by the diameter equals pi, I can rearrange the equation and do diameter times pi, and that should equal the circumference. If I use that multiplication property of equality we learned with equations, that's where this particular formula comes from. Um, if we're not given diameter, if they give us radius, well, we know that there's a relationship between radius and diameter. Two radius make up a diameter. So we could also do two times the radius times pi to also have a formula to find the circumference. So depending on what they give you, either one of these formulas will get you the same answer. So let's say we have a circle and let's say that the diameter is equivalent to 10 meters. OK, so if I wanted to find the circumference, the circumference is going to be equal to the diameter times pi, which is just going to be 10 times pi. Or I could write it like this, 10 pi. Just how I, um, when we had equations, we could write a coefficient next to a variable to represent multiplication. With pi, we can do the same thing. We can write a number in front of pi to represent that number times pi. And sometimes I may ask you to leave your answers in terms of pi. And that is what this particular format looks like. So this is what's called in terms of pi, which means that you do not need to go replace pi with 3.14. You can leave your answer like this. So if I said, find the circumference of this circle and you can leave your answer in terms of pi. That means you can work the problem just so and simplify it all the way. So that way you just have a number times pi, or in this case, it would just be 10 times pi or 10 pi. The circumference of the circle is 10 pi. If I didn't ask you to leave your answers in terms of pi, if there was no direction about that, then you would need to go replace uh pi with 3.14. So um, if we did not leave it in terms of pi, we would do 10 times 3.14, which is equivalent to 31.4. And we would just put meters because again, we're measuring the perimeter. The perimeter is a one dimensional distance. It's like if we had a circular pool and we were trying to paint or put a little fence outside the pool. So our dogs, such as my dog who loves water, doesn't jump into the pool. We would have to find the circumference and we would need, and in, in, according to like just this problem, we would need 31.4 meters of fencing or whatever material it is. So that is how we find the circumference or the perimeter of a circle. Um, let's look at if we need to find the area of the circle. So let's use the same example. We're gonna have a circle that has a diameter of 10 meters. Now to find the area of a circle, um, we are not gonna use the diameter as part of the area formula. To find the area of a circle, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take pi and we're gonna multiply it times the radius and then times the radius again. So this is kind of the formula broken down step by step, pi times radius times radius. 
but you will see it on formula sheets written as pi r squared, because remember anything times itself is just squared. So r times r is r squared. So these are, this is kind of the main formula you'll see, but this is what it's really asking you to do. So what that means is like this problem, if we're given the diameter, we're going to have to figure out what the radius is. And thankful, thankfully, we've already talked about what the relationship between diameter and radius is. So radius is just half the distance. So that means R is going to be five meters because five is half of 10. So if I was to find um, the area of this circle, I'm going to take pi times five and then times five again. So if I was to simplify this, five times five is 25 and pi, we're just gonna leave it in terms of pi right now. So this would just be 25 pi. Please remember that this is radius times radius, not radius times two. If we did five times two and got 10 pi, that's like finding the circumference. That's not finding the area. It should be a bigger amount, right? The area typically takes up more space. So if I did not want to leave this in terms of pi, if I wanted to replace pi with 3.14, 25 times 3.14 is equivalent to 78.5. Um, and then because it's area, I'm going to square my units. So it would be meters squared. So just like with all of the other kinds of area, you're just gonna plug in your parts to the formula and then solve. The biggest thing you have to remember with um, circles is it is radius times radius. And then also you have to replace pi with 3.14 unless the problem indicates otherwise. I have two problems I want you to do for your practice. Um, well, technically I guess it's four because for each of these, I want you to find the circumference in the area. So the first one is you have a circle that has a diameter of 15 meters. I want you to find the circumference in the area. The second one is you have a circle that has a radius of three centimeters and I want you to find the circumference in the area. Please make sure you utilize the formulas. Um, you need to use 3.14 for pi. There's not any sort of indication telling you to leave your answers in terms of pi. So please make sure you do that. Check your answers in the table of contents. Ask me or your teacher for help. And as always, I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.